Heavenly Father, I just thank you for just one more time being in the house of the Lord to lift up the name of Jesus, to declare your word, Father. I thank you for allowing me to be a representative for you, Father. I thank you, God, that you use me, Lord, and I ask you to continue to perfect that which concerns me. Let your word go forth and not fall on deaf ears, God, but let it help heal, let it build, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, continue to increase us with faith, with belief. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Proverbs 24, verse 16. You have a shout. I got it. And the word reads, for a just man falleth seven times and rise it up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Amen. For a just man falls seven times and rise it up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. I just want to use for Amen. The next couple minutes, the title, if you can take the fall, God can pick you back up. Amen. Tell somebody, if you can take the fall, God can pick you back up. For a just man falls seven times and rise it up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. We don't anticipate falling. A fall actually can represent two things. One at one point being up and then Amen. Coming down. And then secondly, it can represent you can just be on a place of low ground. Being in a fallen state don't mean that it's over. It just means or may mean that God is taking you through a low place to get to a better place. We don't anticipate falls. We don't uh, jump into businesses and think they'll fall. We don't raise ourselves up and, and then sit ourselves back down. We don't anticipate a accidents, incidents. Uh, we don't anticipate the outcome or we didn't anticipate the outcome of this coronavirus it's been around for quite a while but no one anticipated it would have as much effect as it is in our nation we don't anticipate the fall hallelujah we don't anticipate the anxiety of having to start life all over again but tell somebody if you can take the fall God can pick you back up before you go go down or before we can get up you have to first go down. Being down is not necessarily in a fallen state as in woe is me, but also just may be coming from a place of lowliness or going through a valley where God is walking you through the process of life to bring you to the place that he has called you to be. Coming up requires you to first go down. Amen. And you have to start from a low place to get to a high place. If I can just share my testimony. I didn't start off uh, and I'm not saying I'm high and I'm above and I, I got it all going on because I got some issues and I got some flaws but I didn't start off with a microphone in my hand I, I started cleaning the toilets of the house of the Lord I started moving chairs for the house of the Lord I started witnessing I started street witnessing I started cleaning houses and, and helping pastor with documents and real estate before the health care business I remember seeing pastor sitting in the office tearing all night most nights writing contracts contracts, doing research to bring in wealth for the people, wealth for the church and wealth to the children of God. I started off in a, in a slow place, uh, but God is telling me I'm trying to, I've done some things in your life because I'm trying to bring you to a better state, a better place. So I use that to say, uh, Pastor Kiner is in a very blessed state. Latanya is, I'm hearing, is in a very blessed state. But it took them some time to get to where they are. It took me seeing the man of God sitting in his office, looking like he's staring at the computer and just doing stuff for the Lord. But he was just tarrying all night to get the research to crack the code so that God can pick him up and bring him into the place where God is getting ready to take him to. This is starting from a low place. Tell somebody, you may have to start from a low place, but God is going to pick you up. If you can take the fall, God can pick you up. God was ministering this word to me to be able to take uh, some stuff that I didn't want to have to take because sometimes the image of looking like you're going down or the image of looking like you're lost or losing, looking like, amen, God is not on your side. It will break down barriers within you, but God says, I can't raise you up until I see you get a little lower. I can't bring you out until I see you break yourself down. The Bible says that he gives grace to the lowly. So he began to deal with me even more and I began to make several sacrifices. I started off not only doing all those other things, but summarizing books and messages, sacrificing my own life, my own family, not showing up for family functions so I can show up for God and to be a part of the ministry and to follow the man of 
of God and the vision for this church. I'm just trying to tell you, if you can give up some stuff for God, God can give you some things back. Uh, he can pick you up from the fall. Sometimes when we look at our situation, the enemy makes us look back over our past. Uh, don't become like Lot's wife uh, and start looking over the lost. Uh, but look at what God is getting ready to do for your later. Just tell somebody, if you can take the fall, God can pick you back up. Uh, we don't want to fall. We don't want the image of looking like everything is over. We don't want to feel like uh, God is done with us. We don't want to feel like, uh, amen, it's the end of the story. And God just began to tell me to tell you it's not over until God says it's over. If you can lower yourself a little bit lower, if you can go down onto the floor, if you can look like you're falling, even if I'm not going to let you fall, because he says a just man may fall seven times, but he will rise up again. And the Bible also says that he keepeth your feet from falling. So the enemy will try to make it feel like, look like uh, you're, amen, going down or you're in a different place. Uh, but tell somebody, God is just picking you up. Uh, he's just testing your valley places. Uh, he's just testing your dry places. Uh, he's just testing to see uh, if you can walk, hallelujah, lowly. If you can walk uh, on a low ground until he puts you on a higher ground. So it takes a moment to get started. Uh, but when you get started, tell somebody, when you get started, you can tend to get to a place where it feels like things are not necessarily, or you may feel like I've arrived in a place, but we have never arrived. When you've come so far and you see, and it seems like life is pulling you down, tell somebody, it ain't pulling you down. God is just pulling you up. It's God is just pulling you up. A lot of us struggle with this because we work so hard to protect our image and to protect what we've had and to protect the things that God has given us and to protect the outside world from really seeing what's going on on the inside. But if you can take the fall, if you can and expose yourself before people, God will allow them to see, uh, hallelujah, what he's getting ready to do. If you can take the fall, God can pick you back up. Tell somebody, if you can take the fall, God can pick you back up. We, I'm talking about I me. Mean, we're working so hard to prevent the fall that we don't give ourselves enough vulnerability to give God space to show us uh, he will pick you back up again. Sometimes we can have so much uh, uh, so much personal uh, pride, I can say, if I can say pride, uh, that we don't want to show people the worst side of us or the bad part about us or we don't want to show people our flaws so we'll put on a smile when we're really not happy. We'll put on our best robe or we'll put on our best dress uh, when we're really not feeling the best. But if you can anticipate, if you don't anticipate the fall, but if you let, let God, amen, take you through the low places uh, and stop hiding on the inside out. God can pick you up from the fall. Tell somebody he can pick you up. God can pick you up uh, because he's already up. Tell somebody he's already up. The Bible says in Proverbs 3 and 34 surely he scorned the scorner but give grace to the lowly. Jesus had to go down before he can get back up. The Bible asked the question if any man will take up his cross and deny himself and follow me. See, the cross gets heavy, and we know when things feel heavy, we can tend to start breaking at the knee. When you take up your cross, it, 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 it tends to make you feel like uh, uh, that you're getting ready to fall along the way because the cross gets heavy. What you're going through can get heavy. The weight on your shoulder gets heavy. Life issues get heavy. The thought of uh, uh, maybe uh, getting sick and getting in the hospital gets heavy. The thought of your child not following care through can get a little heavy. The thought of your spouse, amen, not being uh, uh, in compliance, not in compliance with the word, not being faithful to your home, it can get a little heavy. Whatever cross you bear, sickness in your body may feel a little heavy. Not being able to pay the bills may feel a little heavy. Trying to come to church and worship, trying to socially distance, trying to, amen, rub two nickels against a dime, but don't know where the next meal is coming from. It may get a little heavy. Trying to do ministry while money is funny. Trying to do work for God while your home is out of order. It can feel a little heavy, but Jesus says, I'm not looking for those that got it all together. I'm not looking for the perfect. I'm looking for the imperfect so that I can perfect that which concerns him. I'm looking for a people that knows how to take up their cross, that knows how to bear their burden, that knows how to walk with the weight. The Bible says his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Hallelujah. And, but we'll let the enemy fool us or issue situations fool us like we can't 
carry the cross uh, that God has given us to carry. But uh, hallelujah, tell somebody, I'm anointed for this cross. Uh, I'm anointed to bear my burdens. Uh, I'm anointed to do uh, what God has given me to do. Uh, ask somebody, can you carry your cross? Uh, because you got to go down before you can get back up. Uh, how can we talk about a resurrected Jesus if we don't know how to carry the cross? Uh, if we don't allow that thing to weigh us down? I want to encourage you tonight. Uh, when it feels like it's heavy, when it feels like it's waiting, just think about your Jesus uh, on Calvary's cross. Uh, when they mocked him and they talked about him, when they misused him and abused him, uh, when they dismissed him and dismayed him, he still carried the cross. Uh, and he said, I'm going to take upon myself uh, your yoke and your sin, uh, and I'm not willing that any perish. Uh, so think about Jesus, uh, how he walked the walk, uh, and he talked the talk. Uh, and if didn't nobody believe him, uh, he says, I carry my weight. Uh, I'm carrying the weight of my people up on my shoulder because I got a cross to bear. I got a cross to bear. When you take up your cross, tell somebody, when you take up your cross, it can feel a little heavy. And it may begin to attempt to break you at the knee. But God will prevent you from falling. There were people in the Bible that also went down, but the Father picked them back up. The first one we talked about is Jesus. He represents the fall for purpose. We had to have a sacrifice. We had to have one that was without spot or without blemish uh, to take upon the yoke of our sins. Uh, Jesus represents the fall for purpose. Sometimes we just got to go through stuff uh, to get to the purpose that God has over our life. Sometimes it takes uh, the fall before we can see the business is really coming to life. Sometimes it takes uh, the sacrifice and the giving of all of yourself before you can see the hand of God uh, really giving back unto you. Sometimes purpose, uh, hallelujah, will make you look like you're falling, but God is really picking you up. Uh, he's really getting ready to place you into a place uh, that I haven't seen, that ears haven't heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for him. So we got to remember Jesus. He went down, but tell somebody he got back up. Your fall is temporary, but your position to get back up is always going to be permanent. Not only did Jesus go down, but the father picked him up, but Job represents the fall for proof. Job represents the fall for proof. God was setting the devil up to show him, uh, though he was allowing the enemy to do what he did, God was also uh, allowing his word to be proved in the heart of Job, knowing Job wasn't going to turn his back on God. And sometimes we have some Job's in Christ, uh, uh, some Job's in the body of Christ, uh, that God will take your life uh, and make you a representation uh, for the proof and the testimony of God. Because he know that if he put that cross up on your back, uh, you're not going to turn around, you're not going to turn back, uh, you're not going to give up on God. You're going to worship him. Though he slay you, you'll trust him. Job represents the fall for proof. This is why the, you cannot be afraid to take the fall. Because if Job would not have taken the fall, he would not have been able to see the double in his life. If you don't know how to go down, you can't get up and see the blessings of God that he already has ordained for your life. Job represents the fall for proof. Jesus represents the fall for purpose. And then Jew, the Jews represented the fall for promotion. Haman put out a hit against the whole, all the Jews. But it just so happened that God was getting ready to raise up an Esther who was also a Jew. And the Bible says that in the book of Esther that, amen, the Jews had a hit out on their life. It looked like to Mordecai, amen, that the Jews were about to die. It looked like to Mordecai that his house was getting ready to die. It looked like to Mordecai that they would not be able to call on the name of the Lord, that they would not be able to be free from the, uh, the, from the, 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 the slavery of sin. But the Bible says that there came one named Hadessa who God has raised to Esther, Esther. And the Bible says that when Mordecai sent the letter, to Esther that he, she told them what was decreed upon them and Esther said if I go before the king I, it's not my time but if I perish I perish. The Jews represent the fall for promotion just because a promotion was coming for the Jews God was getting ready to give them the victory is the reason why amen the Bible 
declared uh, that they were able to look like they were falling, but indeed God was getting ready to pick them back up. Uh, I'm just telling somebody tonight uh, that you've been set up for a promotion. Uh, God has another level for you. God has a great plan for you. God has a word over your life. Uh, God has something on the inside of you. Uh, hallelujah. That can't be disannulled. Uh, that can't be rejected. Uh, it can't be dismissed. Uh, it can't be denied. Uh, it cannot be delayed uh, because you are the representation. Uh, amen. For the fall for promotion. Uh, God is getting ready uh, to make the enemy out of a liar. What he meant for bad. Uh, God is turning around for good. Uh, I can also talk about uh, how Joseph was set up uh, by his very own brothers. Uh, they took him uh, and they mocked him uh, and they denied the dream that was over his life. Uh, they denied what God was telling him in his ear. People will be around you uh, and they will deny the very thing uh, that God has already said to you. Uh, but it does not matter if they deny it, reject it, uh, or do not believe in it. If God has said it, uh, that settles it. Uh, if God proclaimed it, he's already established it. Uh, so the Bible says that how that Joseph had to go down into the pit. Uh, but the story ends uh, with him resting in a palace. Uh, tell somebody, get ready to get into your palace. Uh, there is peace in the palace of God. Uh, the presence of God is in his palace. Uh, the promotion is in his palace. Uh, if you can take the fall, uh, God can pick you back up. Uh, if you don't be afraid uh, to go down in your situation, uh, God is going to bring you the victory uh, in that situation. There are three ways to, to, uh, to take a fall that will please God to pick you up. The first way is to humble yourself. Humble myself. There is nothing worse to be in a fallen state and to be down and act like you up. I know we have, the, the, we say, you know, don't let people see what you're looking like. I'm all for that. And don't let people, amen. Don't, Pastor Connie used to often say, fake it till you make it. That's it. Fake it till you make it. Hallelujah. This is the Cornita's word is, amen. You don't have to show people everything you're going through. But tell somebody, humble yourself. Nothing worse than acting like you all up, amen, and you know God is doing a work in your spirit. Tell somebody, you got to humble yourself. The images, uh, uh, the, the devil uses images, amen, of pride to make us feel like uh, we have to display a certain look or a certain attitude in order for people to believe something about us. Uh, tell somebody, you are that something if don't nobody believe it. Uh, you are still that someone if don't nobody agree with it. Uh, you are still that blessed, that highly favored child. You are still the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath you. If they don't appreciate you, you, if they appreciate you, still know that God is with you. If you can take the fall, God can pick you back up. But we have to know how to humble ourselves. And a lot of times, amen, we don't humble ourselves enough before God. So we stay in our situations too long or longer than what we should because of the lack of humility. But again, God gives grace unto the lowly. I heard Minister Williams once say, the higher you go, the lower you got to get to the flow. That's why I take pride in myself to make sure that if somebody say you look good, you smell smell good, you talk good today, you smile good today, I make sure I got to go back and, and humble myself because I don't want to get too ahead of myself in the name of Jesus, amen. You please God with humility. And the Bible says to be clothed in humility. We got to be clothed in humility. It's not just something you wear on the outside. We can't look like we humble and not really be humble. There is a difference. Secondly, help somebody. Helping somebody is not about us. God is a very present help in the time of trouble. It's a terrible feeling to need somebody in the midst of trouble. And, and you talking about, I can't deal with that right now. People will have a nervous breakdown waiting on some of us to help. People will be in the mental hospital waiting on some of us to come through. If you can't say nothing else, at least give somebody a word of encouragement. At least tell somebody to hang in there, sister. Hang in there, brother. Hold on. Help is on the way. It's going to be all right. I love you anyhow. I'm praying for you anyhow. Tell somebody, help somebody. If you can take the fall, God can pick you back up. There was a statement we're getting ready to close that was told by Senate uh, Schumer. That called for up to, I believe, twenty or twenty-five thousand dollars to be given to essential workers on the front line. 
Now, I'm sure Shuma didn't need any money. I'm sure he didn't need any extra finances. But because he had the, uh, the, the desire to help somebody else, uh, now what uh, some of these people are getting bonuses on their job. God is increasing the health care funding. God is uh, uh, elaborating and doing what? Blessing people, the American citizens. Why? Because somebody had a desire to help somebody. I don't like to be around people that in the time of trouble, you got to roll, you rolling your eyes. Uh, you saying you, you got more word. You should be on a, a, another level than this. I don't like that. Sometimes uh, you got to learn how to say something that's going to build somebody up. If you can't give me a dime, you can't give me a dollar, at least give me a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, help somebody. The fastest way to see God's help uh, is to become somebody else's help. Thirdly, heal somebody. Words heal, and they also hurt. Well, we used to say growing up, and I used to be big and bad, saying this all the time, thinking I was bad. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt. Found that to be a lie. The Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue. We can kill people faster with our tongues than we can with a gunshot wound. And we have to learn how to heal people. A lot of times we don't want to help because we see flaws. We see the flaws over the need. And we neglect the fact that God had to overlook our flaws and bless our need. I don't want to be that person that's quick to give up on somebody when God didn't give up on me. I don't want to give that person, be that person to see somebody's falling and don't extend my hand to pick them up. Amen. I don't want to be that person, hallelujah, that turned my neck, turned my mouth, turned my cheek, and I got a word in my soul a word in my heart, a word on my mind, and I turn around and see somebody else going through it, and I can't lift them up with the word from God. Tell somebody, learn how to pick somebody up with the words in your mouth and not be deadly, hallelujah, to the words from your tongue. If you can take the fall, amen, you can get back up. Though a just man falls seven times, he rises up again. You got to give yourself time for your prayers to work. You got to give yourself time for God to possess position you in his will. You got to give yourself time for God to provoke you to worship. See, worship is not birthed by all the good that happens to us. It's by the fall that has taken place in our life. It's by the hell. It's by the crosses that we've had to bear. It's by the weight that has been on my shoulder. It's by the burdens that has been on your back that will usher you into the presence of God. That's what makes us get picked back up again. It's not the amount of money in your bank account. It's not how much business you can do to see the hand of God working on your life. It's not how many shoes are in the closet, how much clothes and how much shopping we can do. It's by, amen, your humbleness and your sacrifice and your time that you give for God to work on you. It's the stuff that we go through that drives us, uh, hallelujah, to want to get back up again. Tell somebody, a just man falls seven times, uh, but he's getting back up. Uh, tell somebody, you can get back up uh, from all of your crying days. Uh, you can get back up uh, from every broke day. Uh, you are getting back up uh, from every time the enemy try to attack you uh, through situations and through issues and through people and through obstacles. Uh, tell somebody, if you can take the fall, God can pick you back up again. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Don't be afraid to take the fall. It's Keisha blessing.